Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the dogs got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. The story was Bob Dalton's girl was always writing about how he had no ambition. Or he had nobody next to Jesse James, he said. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Coffeyville just to shut her up. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Their first mistake was pulling a job in their own <laughs> damn home town. <laughs> paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, and now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty man feared by many of the lawbreakers. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. No, you just gotta win. This bounty man knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. He saw we'd get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. It's brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. <clears throat> Other men couldn't and wouldn't to make this country free. Jim Booth and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. 
Is that Silas Greaves? Son of a bitch! Uh! 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 Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. I was late to the party, and Coffeeville was already up in arms. The Daltons blew up a safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something <sighs> reckless. Finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. They still had friends in Coffeeville. You can't get me. Keep shooting. I don't mind. <laughs> Side of the dolphin. Ah! Ah! Got those boys. Shoot him down. They ain't getting away with this. Come on. We gotta get out of here. I think we don't lose it all. How stupid idea was this?
The Dalton boys knew I would never give up. survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. 